All right. Good morning, guys. It's Mike Rains here wanting to give you a market update here on uh, Thursday, February 24th. Big headline days as Russia invades Ukraine. And so I wanted to give this video out today as a market update because we want to not necessarily be driven by headline news when it comes to what's happening in the real estate market, but we want to see what's really going on. Um, we do that by being able to crunch some of the numbers and looking at uh, what's happening um, out there in reality. So I'm going to share my screen here and start uh, this presentation and showing you what's going on with the market update and um, how you can be able to rely on it so that you can be able to make good decisions out in the marketplace for that. So um, if you like this kind of content, let me know in the descriptions um, when you put a comment in, like the video, subscribe to the channel so that I can be able to understand what kind of information you're looking for so I could be a value to you. So let's go ahead and get started with today's market update here. We'll start off by looking at what's happening in the new sales department. And obviously in Orange County, we don't have a lot of new stuff that's being built. More of that's being in Riverside, San Bernardino and other counties around there. But right now what's happening is new home sales are falling, um, but the pricing continues to march higher. So we want to take a look at why that is. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so one of the things that's with the new housing market, with the, the sales falling, they're not building a lot in any way. We've talked in other videos about how low the inventory is and, and builders haven't gone shotgun. So they didn't really start launching a bunch of new buildings um, and that shows in the amount of inventory that they have. And so the home sales are falling in part because there's not a lot of inventory. So as we see down here, it says the sales of US single family homes, and this is at a national level, fell slightly more than expected in January, likely as rising mortgage rates and higher prices sideline some first time buyers from the market. And this is from Reuters. Uh, so new home sales for about four and a half percent to a seasonally adjusted annual rate of 801,000 units. Now that when they seasonally adjust it, it shows what it would be for the year. And we need more than a million and a half in order to meet the demand. So let's keep going on here. So last month, the Commerce Department said on Thursday, December sales pace was revised higher to 839 units from the previously reported 811. And we may see another adjustment um, next month coming out with these numbers as well. So in the news, new housing market remains underpinned by a record low inventory, as we just talked about, of previously owned homes. And so demand for the housing is expected to remain strong, even as mortgage rates have increased. And they've increased coming up approaching 4%. So with together with the high prices, that's going to erode affordability for first-time buyers and others alike. So as we move forward, if the interest rates continue to rise, we will see a little bit of dampening of that demand. So let's now take a look at what's going on in the Orange County housing market. We see right here that um, the Orange County housing market, we see the demand rising, which is very normal at this time of the year, January, February. You can see all the previous years all start going up at the same time. But we're kind of tracking along with this 2019 number pending sales, and, and we're going to continue to see it rise. It'll probably follow a very similar uh, path to this. So the, the reality on the ground is, is in, in my listings and others that I've talked to you, they're still experiencing multiple offers on all of the listings. So the demand is a little bit higher than what's shown here because the demand in these charts are for the, the previous two weeks of escrows going on. So what I can tell you is that for each listing, and if you get, let's say, five or 10 offers, um, there's four or nine more people that have to go off looking at something else. So the demand, the true demand on the ground is higher than what's shown in these, these particular piece. So with the demand surging compared to the smaller rise in the inventory, the expected market time, the number of days to sell all the Orange County listings at the current buying pace dropped from 23 days to 20. So in 20 days, if there's no new houses that come on the market, we will be completely out of homes to sell. Um, that's really fast, just so you know. So in the past couple of weeks, it's insanely hot seller's market, which is measured by less than 60 days on the market. So right now, 20 days to sell through all of it, that's less than 60 days, that's a hot seller's market. And here we see all of these segments 
broken down. So you can see homes priced between zero and 750. They're taking 15 days. That normally last year was 19 days, which is really fast, even compared to the other years. Same thing with 750 to a million. So these four areas right here, all the way up to about a million and a half, they're taking under 20 days. And that makes up pretty much the bulk. You look at about 60, 60 or so percent of the inventory um, that's in there. And it's also representative of most of the demand. That's where most of the buyers are. And notice that the other thing is 30% is higher than 23%. So there's more buyers and in this market than there is sellers available to sell. Same thing with the up to million. Little bit closer at the million 25 and about... 1% higher on the, the one point up to 1.5 million. And then it starts flipping the other way around where there's a little bit more inventory uh, than buyers in both the, the segments from 1.5 million to 2 million and 2 million to 4 million and so on and so forth down to the luxury properties on that. So again, that's ridiculously hot. So at the end of the day, we want to know what does this really mean for you? So as a buyer, uh, what this starts to mean to you is that you got to know that you're in competition with others um, and you need to reflect that in the offer um, that you write. So the other thing I'd recommend is, is as you're looking out there, offer on more than one home at a time. So if you're out there looking at three, four or five homes and you like two out of the four, I would suggest writing offers on two out of the four because it's so competitive. The other thing is I would highly recommend don't give up. You know, you're going to get a property. It's just a matter of connecting the right uh, time for you. And, and I would go higher on properties that you really, really, really like, and not so much on the other homes. If, if you like it, make an offer, try to get it. But if you get beat out, you're okay, because it's not a home that you love. So the other thing is, uh, you should watch my video on writing a winning offer. There's some certain strategies that you should to take a look at to help you as a buyer. And you'll see in that video, it's not always the highest offer that gets the deal. So as a seller, though, you want to look at um, using a professional that can negotiate your best terms and offer. And that's key in this market, because if you're trying to do it on your own, you may get pinned into to taking an offer um, without really testing the market and negotiating the highest price and the best terms that benefit you as a seller. Um, so you need a professional to work with. The other thing is, is that if you own a home and you're trying to get into another home in another area or out of state, there's the seller contingency to find a re suitable replacement property that you can use to secure the next home and avoid moving twice. So the other thing is you want to allow the process itself to work out. Don't rush to accept the first offer because you want to allow your agent the opportunity and the time to help you identify the best offer, both in price and in terms. And as I said before, recognize that the highest price isn't always the equation to the, uh, the best offer, the ones that's going to close. So the worst thing that can happen to you as a seller is you get into escrow and then you don't have uh, somebody that can actually close the deal. You go back onto the market and the other buyers are like, hmm, what's going on with this house? Is there something wrong? Uh, maybe they'll jump at the opportunity to do it, but it's wasting your time and it could result in a lower price. So that's it for today. Uh, so if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to, to uh, ring me up, give me some kind of a feedback in the comments. Uh, you can email me or text me. I'm always available to answer your questions. I'm never too busy for your referrals. So uh, make sure to like this, this uh, video and subscribe to the channel and let me know, know in the comments below if this is the type of, of uh, information you'd like or put some ideas in there of things that you would like to see because I'd love to be able to bring you some of that information as well. So hope you have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.